Hey guys, welcome back to the channel here at Muddy Thumper again. I'm just going to introduce you guys. This is my new project. She's an eight wheeled Argo 1984. These machines are amphibious. They're extremely cool. They're basically like a tank or like a workhorse and they're made here in Canada. So I've been trying to get one for a while. I really can't afford like the brand new one, although they are cool. So me being me, I bought an old one with engine trouble. <laughs> So I'm taking you guys along, I'm going to be fully going through this thing, see if I can get her up and running. And um, greasing her up, uh, doing an engine swap, taking the top off, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. Let's do it. As you can see currently, uh, she died on me. And old 200M is pulling her in the shed. <laughs> Yeah, we got a project on our hands, boys. But I think she's gonna be a nice project nonetheless. It's a good old girl. This is still my favorite bike, 200 in. Guys, so we got her in the shed. She's a beautiful machine. As you see, I literally just had to haul her in here with the 200 in, which sucks. <laughs> but I can smell fuel, and I think she's down on compression. So it would make sense where she flooded and flooded herself and died. We had a little 200 m had no problem pulling her. So yeah, we are officially in the shed with a new project here at Buggy Thumper. So yeah, we got the eight-wheeler. So I figure where this is video one. Let's go ahead, let's test compression. And we'll just see, I'll look up the specs online here now shortly. And uh, we'll see how our compression's hitting. If the compression is bad, guess what? We are pulling that engine. And she might get the same factory uh, motor because it is a beautiful motor down in there. But we will see what happens here now. Okay guys, so we will be testing the compression. So this is the engine I got here. Series 2 Kohler, twin 17, the air, like an industrial variant engine. It sounds literally like a tractor, like a lawnmower, like a ride-on tractor type of thing. So uh, yeah, she is a twin cylinder. You can see down here we got one spark plug and on the back end we got another spark plug. So I'm gonna pull these, go get the compression tester and um, Open up the throttle, spin her over, and we'll see what kind of compression we got here now. Guys, this is literally my first time actually working on an Argo, so with these next few videos and the series I'll be doing, the like mini-series on the channel, expect me to learn a lot and uh, just continue on learning this all as ever about. Anyways, we're going to be checking the compression. So, uh, we got a spark plug here. You can see someone got a brand new one in her. And back here. So, I actually had this running for about 30 seconds or so, maybe a minute. Tried to power in the garage on her own, and she died on me. But a uh, quick obvious thing I'm noting, this front cylinder up here, it feels hot. This one back here is icy cold. So that might be an actual blown cylinder back there, or no spark. She's not firing on the back end. So let's go ahead now. I'm going to find out what size spark plug fits down there. And we are going to hook up the compression tester. So guys, I ended up testing the compression. Um, the rear cylinder was showing up as 90 PSI, if I recall exactly. The front was showing up as 100 PSI. And the only thing is, she had a lot of blow-by because when I was, cr I was cranking the engine, uh, so much oil was actually coming out of the crankcase breather. But um, I actually have a spare engine over on the floor there that uh, the fellow I bought this machine off actually provided me with. And it has 140 PSI per cylinder. So I'm going to hope that she runs and I'm throwing her in here. That's the goal. So yeah, that's what we're doing. We're going to be doing an engine swap because of that reason. And um, after this, I may end up checking the spark as well. She did have lots of spark. It just compression isn't where she needs to be. Okay, so I'm back out in the shed. Can't get a whole lot done today. Everything's closed for the holiday for Canada today. But uh, I got this floor pan out. Just uh, a couple pins. And four screws, literally like four screws, and remove this shroud nice and easy. So you can kind of see how the Argo works. You have like an engine that's kind of like a skidoo or snowmobile. And it's just powered up a gearbox. 
which you have running down to your brake and also driven sprocket, which is connected in chains. So when you pull your lever, you're just using that brake caliper, lock them one side up, nice and easy, eh? This actually came with a spare engine, this whole Argo, it came up with a backup engine. So take you guys along. I'm literally just gonna test the compression on this engine. No idea if it runs, absolutely no idea. But we'll try it out if it does run. I'm gonna paint it up and uh, throw it down in that other thing over there. And this big girl. All right, I'll stick you guys in the stand and we'll test for compression on the departure. Hey you popped on the stand. So as you can see, we have first cylinder on right here. You can see the compression gauge. Um, I got one, one lead, my positive lead on my battery starter slash uh, charger. And all we have to do is touch, touch the other lead off, off the engine. So let's have a look now, see if we got any compression on this cylinder. Move you guys a bit closer just so you can try to see that. And this does actually have oil in it, so we don't need to worry about that. Gee, sounded like she wanted to go. <laughs> it's a lot of compression. It sounded like she wanted to go on the floor. <laughs> look at the look at the compression on that. That's about 120 psi almost. Yeah, about 120 psi. Wow. All right, now I'll take this out without beating the gauge up. That is quite funny. It sounded like she almost wanted to go with no fuel or nothing. <laughs> This thing might, this actually might run. <laughs> okay guys, so it looks like this engine has a lot of trouble. 90 PSI the rear cylinder, the crankcase is throwing oil out. Big deal though, because this thing is really cool. And I've wanted one forever. So, <laughs> yeah, alright. I guess we'll get to it there probably tomorrow. Hey guys, so I'm back out in the shed here. It's the next day, so as we established last night, we are going to be uh, painting up this engine and throwing that down in. She has 140 PSI per cylinder, which is a lot nicer than this one, which has 90 and 100. So, never taken an engine out of one of these before, but it can't be no harder than a tree wheeler. So, um, yeah, it looks pretty straightforward, eh? We got your carb, we got this big shroud, we have this shroud over here, it needs to come out of the, it needs to come out of the way. We have all of our wiring. It should be pretty easy to pop all this off. So yeah, I will grab the stand and um, yeah, I guess we'll start tearing in this, get this out, out of there. So for the ignition, this back one right here, this was on the back plug like that, this front one, it's going to be on the front plug, so just so in case you want to know how it goes. Here's a nice overview of how everything looks. You can see she is really oily, eh? Alright, I'm going to grab, uh, grab some my screwdrivers and we're going to start with taking these shrouds off. So, let's send this tendo. I keep thinking that it's a uh, metric, but let's have a look. Is it nine mil? Not a nine mil order. This is very strange. Must be three. Mil. Okay, so I finally found, found a right wrench. <laughs> it is a 3.8. I knew eventually I'll find it. <laughs> One of those days.
So I'm just kind of poking my way, taking my time, learning how this all works. So you can see you pull on the throttle. That's your linkage right here. So we're going to twist the throttle. You can see it just pulls. Nice and simple. So it looks like just one bolt holds the cable on, one little skinny one here. And we got the throttle out of the way. Uh, as I was saying earlier, the back one on the ignition coil is for the rear cylinder based on this. The front one looks like it comes down here for the front cylinder. And for our trigger, this little wire should have a secondary trigger. Yeah, since this, this whole system has uh, points and condensers. Anyways, the black one, which is sitting on the top here, it's feeding down into these two wires. I'll move my other hand out of the way. Black one right here, feeding down to the two wires and a connector, as you can see that. And the other side of your ignition coil goes right here. So it must be part of the points, I'd imagine. I'm going to do some, re oh look, there's a condenser right there. I'm going to have to learn a bit more about this, first time working on one. But yeah, let's go ahead now, let's uh, pull off the throttle, let's pull off uh, carb, get these out of the way. Okay, so the throttle's let go. Let's go ahead, pop this big shroud off, get rid of these electrical wires. This is going to clip. Let's have a look. This is going clip perfect. Nice. And clips, you can see it's like, has a T way or a T. I might even lead the carb right around because I'm literally just pulling the engine. But um, you can see the, the choke right here. Like this is the cable for the choke. Look how simple it is. It uh, hooks right here on a little bracket, which you can probably see there now. It comes over here. You can see the rest of the choke cable. So it sits right there. And it's just right here to pull this flap. Just pulls that flap, that's all. Nice and easy choke cable, eh? I'll let that go there now. And we'll let the fuel on. Okay, so the choke cable is now officially off. So now we're just going to pull out the fuel pump right here. So I'll just zoom in and show you guys. Hang on now. Do, 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 do. Alright, so it's over right here. Got a line, little hose clamp. And that's the fuel pump right here. As you can see, it looks like it's timed off the engine because otherwise it'll be sitting externally and it's going over here to your curb pretty easy right there Hey guys, so I got the exhaust off, had to drill out the, the rivets over here. Yeah, there was a little bit of a pain in the butt to work on. So I got the rivets drilled out. Uh, spun the belt off, just same as Skidoo, just back it off, keep pushing over, it will pop off. So the belt is off. And now, as you can see how simple this is, once you get the shroud out of the way, it's just like a big old lawn tractor engine. So yeah, now it's just uh, the bolts on the bottom, securing this down to the, the bed frame or engine frame whatever you want to call it and that's it and then i actually have to go track down a uh 
which make all this like a um, come along type of thing because I gotta be able to pull this engine out and she's a bit heavy for myself to pull out so yeah what's cool with these things I'm not used to it like I'm always used to the trikes and stuff where you gotta go full wire harness um, the only thing I took off is like this connector right here <laughs> pretty simple and there's a the power lead for this electric start but other than that she's a self-contained unit so she doesn't need a traditional wire harness okay guys back in the shed here again so um gotta get ready to pull this engine now shortly it's actually really hard to work on this the way it is so since i'm going to be going through this whole machine anyways i'm going to actually be separating her so you can see top part of the tub and the bottom are just riveted on together so i'm going to go around i'm going to take off the big uh, rack that's here unbolt it and then i'm going to start drilling all those rivets out and then eventually have this ready to go so she'll be separated so it's going to take a little while but uh it's nice to do anyways i can actually take the top off i can get down at the engine i can fully clean everything grease it all up um paint any spots that need to be painted and whatnot check all the bearings so might as well go through her nothing really to strip this down so let's do it guys let's uh go ahead now and prop you on the stand and let's start drilling out some rivets okay so i just got rid of that cage finally that was a bit of a pain in the butt to take off it is gone so yeah it's time to get off this rubber here now it just peels down out of the way as you can see and i'm going to be drilling all these rivets out and replace them back maybe with rivets or maybe with nuts and bolts just for the top part and i'm also going to have this sealed up really good with a something like a boat epoxy or something like that So just quickly drilled out all those aluminum rivets, really easy to drill. So I'm going to start separating, uh, <laughs> aside from tripping over the chair, I'm going to start uh, separating the tub from the bottom, from the top. So I'm just taking a screwdriver, popping them past the rivets. And I think that's mainly it. I don't know, I've never actually separated the tub before. I know we're going to have to let the controls go. Which is just a couple switches, basically. That is super cool. Look how easy it is to go apart. I still gotta finish drilling out the rivets, but much easier to work on now. And I'll just uh, put nuts and bolts back in there when I seal her up, get some good epoxy, like marine grade, and uh, seal around her as well. But now it's gonna be super easy to work on. There's the old junky engine. Old connectors. <laughs> I don't know what you're gonna find down here now. Hopefully you enjoyed this first video anyways. I think that's enough for this one. Um and part two, who knows what we're gonna be getting up to. But um I need to go through this fully. I need to swap the engine out. I need to uh look for all ho any holes at all. Um I'm gonna get some real good epoxy, look it up online, see what the best to use is, and make sure that any holes are fully plugged because i do want this to be a floater but yeah i am pretty happy eh so we started with a full machine and now we got our easier to work on 
Tracks gotta come off as well. It's probably be the next video. We'll get the tracks off, get the wheels off, check all the wheel bearings, paint up the rims. Nice bit of fun. All right, guys. Thanks for watching on the video, and uh, stay tuned for episode two and uh, some more videos. All right. See you again soon.